up YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Um, this is um sample school discussion number three. Um, and 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 sort of a recap. This is like for beginners, cause um, I was recently hit up that a brother's having some trouble, so I figure out maybe I didn't start off as basic enough. So I'm gonna kind of go through. It's kind of like a recap of sample school volume one, I believe. Pretty much where I was just going over the basics. Um. <clears throat> Now, when you first start, um, it's so, you hear this music, you get so passionate about it, you just want to get it in. You just wish you knew everything you needed to know so you could just get in and just be like, I mean, you just get it in and then like everything just come together. But unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. I mean, it takes time. But I will say this, the gratification um, and, and the satisfaction and, and, and the pride that you get from honing your craft is unbelievable. Um, so just go through the process. You got to start from the basics and then hone your craft, meaning start from the beginning. Everything is about timing. Everything is about rhythm. When it comes to a loop, when it comes to laying drums to a loop, when it comes to even you chopping up your samples, everything is done with the rhythm. So your foundation should really be the drums. Don't worry about doing intricate drum patterns. Don't worry about what you, you know, what other people say and things of that nature. Just make sure you got your timing on because you can always make better drum patterns. You can always improve. But if you don't get the foundation right, if you don't get your timing on and you can't do the basics, you'll never get the advanced shit down at all. So you always got to start somewhere. You got to crawl before you walk. All right. So. Now, let's start off with the drum beat. I mean, your drum beat, let's do a simple, simple pattern. A lot of times, I still go to a simple, I mean, simple pattern sometimes, just so I can get my chops straight. And then I get everything going. Then I'll go back and redo the drums to, to, to fit the sample and, and the composition itself. So, that being said, let me show you a technique that a lot of um, beginners, but especially veterans, because it's just a cool way to build it, you know, from here to here very easily without getting too complicated all right so what i'm gonna do is um i'm gonna start off with uh a tempo of 82. and i'm gonna do four bars uh, i'm gonna just do two bars for the sake of it well i'm gonna do four now it's going to be pretty long. Let's do two bars. I can always lengthen it. All right. So, first technique is you got your metronome. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. And you'll always hear how the, um, the, 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 when it comes back around to the one, it's always accented with the louder click. So, listen. That, that that loud click is your one. That's your turnaround. So in the two bar loop, that's when it comes right back around to the one. So so two bars are eight beats. So it's simple math, but you gotta kinda understand that. One beat, I mean um one bar is four beats. One, two, three, four. Two two bars are eight beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then back to the um, beginning of that um, bar, to the bar one going into two. So that's how that works. Just know that one bar, four beats. Two bars, eight beats. And that's how it goes. Three bars would be 12, four would be 16. You know, 16 beats, not 16 bars. 16 beats. That's one, two, three, four. That's your timing. Start off with fours. Don't get into triplets and stuff like that yet. Yeah, it'll just drive you crazy. Start off basic. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Three, two, three, four. Four, two, three, four. See, that's 16 right there. Just, you know. So, one, two, three, four, one. One, two, three, four, two. One, two, three, four, three. One, two, three, four, four. Like that. All right? So, yeah, so when you hear that first beat, 
That's where your kick hits. Your kick generally hits on the first, on the one. Your snare generally hits on the two. Doesn't always have to be that way exactly, but if you just do a basic beat, which I'm going to do right now, kick, snare, kick, snare. So boom, bap, boom, bap. So let's do it. So essentially, I got four kicks and four snares. All right. Now, the technique I was saying that a lot of beginners use is they'll start off with either just a kick drum or just a snare drum. So let's just start off with the kick drum first. So you got that down. There you go, basic beat, all right? So, could you get more intricate with it? You could, but now let's start off with the snare. And remember, the snare starts on the two, not the one. One. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Got that? Okay. Now, a lot of people like to start off with the snare because then they can accent the kick. So what do I mean by that? I got this going on. So a lot of times they do the snare because the snare will always hit consistently and, 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 and to give variation to the beat, they, they're using the kick to give variation to the beat. So I'm going to record the kick in just to give you an idea. See? So, well, that's a great technique when learning how to get your drums and get your timing right. But you got to get that timing right and practice it. And, and if you need to go on your machine, watch this video and emulate what I'm doing, by all means, do it. That's the cool thing about YouTube. You can rewind it, do it again, rewind it, do it again until you get it right. It's all about timing. All about timing. So, let's try to get a little bit more intricate. I'm going to start off with the kick drum first, and then I'm going to just try to get fancy with it. Watch. And if you listen, you'll see everything carries the one, whether it's the kick or whether it's the snare. So check it out. One. One, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to say one, two, three, four, because I got four kicks. I got more than four kicks, but let's just be doing a four, four. So I'm going to count my kicks like one, two, three, four. And I'm only counting the kicks that hit on the one, because there's other kicks after it. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the snare, and hopefully you understand. So check it out. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. That's the kick and snare. Two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So I can count four on my kick, then I count four on my snares. Now you can even do intricate stuff with the snare too. So let's 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 redo a beat. And I'm going to start with the kick drum and then I'll do the snare. And, and to keep in mind, when I do the kick drum, I'm accenting it to, 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 to make it a 
a, a cool rhythm. So follow me. So you see what I'm saying? So just doing one at a time allows you to accomplish it. And then once you get your rhythm down and you get that down pat, then you can start doing it the both together. Or even if you do the both together, just make sure you're in time and paying attention to that metronome. So now that I'm on metronome, so let me talk about the metronome a little bit. So all your click. I got it in one fourth. That's typically what I use. Sometimes some people like to have it a little more busy. They go to one eighth, which means it's going twice as fast. So check it out. Right? Some people like to do one sixteenth, right? It's going four times as fast. And you notice I'm doing one at a time. So there you have it. Um, I'm going back to one fourth because that's what I rock with. Some people do it faster. All right? So, and you can even do 130 seconds, and that's ridiculously fast. I believe you can do that. Yeah, like 130 seconds is crazy fast. I was a little off. <laughs> then I'm throwing my snake. So depending on your ear, how you hear, use what works for you. It could be one fourth, it could be one eighth, it could be one sixteenth, one thirty second, whatever your ear catches to get the rhythm right, use that, use that um type of metronome, use that click, use that speed. Alright? I like one fourth. So now, always start off with basic beats first and then start building. So let's start from the beginning and I'm gonna do it. Yeah. My bad. can build on something simple like that so let's just get a um i did put a sample in here let's um didn't make it into a program did i yes i did but let's let's listen to the sample the samples is a beat because i already did it and i already looped it perfectly but i want you to hear it all right so <laughs> pretty fast but it's a beat one chopped it by regions so if your loop is perfect you chop it by regions right and which is and all that is is, is is chopping it equally so what I did was 
I could chop it into eight beats, right? But I chopped it into um, 16, because I always like to double it. It gives you more, more to work with. And all I'm doing is hitting the same rhythm. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So let's count it out. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then the cool thing about chopping it up like that, you can actually time stretch it live. That's an advanced technique, but just check it out. I can do it still one, two, three, four at a time. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All right. Got that? Now, let's say the tempo was perfect. Let's um Oh, let's not get into that. If, let's say, let's do this. All right. I'm going to an empty track. Sorry for winging it here. Let me drag this loop onto pad one. The other thing you can do is, once you got your timing right, you can use tap tempo. Tap tempo will help you get the, the loops, I mean, get the um, sample. So I would go to sample edit or whatever whatever you're using, but in, in, in this case it's the Renaissance, right? I would go to sample edit, hit the loop so it can play, right? And then I'll hit my tap tempo to get my timing. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And I'll hit it every so often. So let me explain how I'm going to do it. I'm going to play it, right? And then I'm gonna hit one, two, three, four. Then I'm gonna stop. One, two, three, four. And I'm gonna stop. One, two, three, four. And I'm stop. I'm gonna do it like three times so I can get it. So I'm hoping I can get a close or accurate beat um, tempo by using the tap tempo. So check this out. Go to my main to see what the tempo is. Tempo is saying it's 110 beats per minute. So I'm gonna make it even 110 beats. Now by doing that, I adjusted my sequence and my drum pattern too. Listen. Alright, so if it's right when I hit this 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 whole phrase that I threw to this one pad, it should go. So let's try it. but kind of not but I'm close to the tempo so what's going faster so the sample is dragging so I'm gonna say it's about maybe 112 so if I record that it'll, it'll play in time So you can hear the drums. So now, I got a basic drum beat under there, right? So now I can go back. We record my drums and, 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 and do a different pattern. And I'll start off with my snares first. Blow off. Let's do it again. Sorry about that.
just off with the kick first. Let's do the time correct to eight. I mean, um, the click to eight. Because then I hear more, more clicks going and I can do it more time. So check this out. point so perfect loop because it's right on time right and then I can just freak my drums to it you can always go back and and, 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 and and do your pattern the drum pattern again same thing with chopping so let's cover that all right sample school volume three beginner recap all right discussion <laughs> and tutorial I guess all right so we're gonna go here and I'm gonna just um, clear this track so that's not there. Now I got the chops here. So the thing is 112. I'm not going to go at 112. I'm going to go back to maybe 90. Let's go to 90. Yeah, 90. Because now I'm playing my chops live so I can do it any way I want. So I'm going to start off with a bass drum beat. Kick first. See that? I'm going to track three. Now I'm going to mess with the sample. Then I can play it the way I want. Or I can just mess around. It's all rhythm. And it's all timing. So if you're struggling, it's probably timing. All right. Now, if you're trying to hook up another sample with this, it could be a pitch issue, and and if they ain't tuned right, it'll sound weird. But let's just stick with the basic. Get your drums down, pack, make simple drum patterns, then add your samples. So, so now, an example of what I was saying that you can, um, hook up your sample, your chops, and then arrange your drum pattern to fit it. Let's find some chops. Then I got basic drum beat to start off with. track one where my drums are and then make my drums fit my chop so let's do that I'm gonna run around so I can erase the drums that are on there and sometimes you may want to listen to it so you can get an idea how you want your drums to go so so I think I wanted to make it go Boom. I'm gonna make it go boom, bap, boom, bap, boom, boom, bap, boom, bap, boom, boom, bap, boom, bap, boom, boom, bap, boom, bap, like that.
now. If I want to do a different drum pad, I can I can do that too. Like so, let's think. Suck em C's is. That's all I'll be able to get in this one, but let's do it. Do the snares first again. Again, just start off simple. Simple drums, get your timing right, right? Use your ear. Get your timing right, simple drums, and then work on intricacy. Um, start off with just even a kick, or start off with just a snare, then work on blending, doing the two together. Just take your time, work on your rhythm, work on your timing. Because if you get your timing done, that's gonna solve a lot of problems. You know, train your ear, to get the timing correctly, all right? Use your metronome, whatever works best for you at whatever um, pace or speed works best. I like to use one fourth, sometimes I do one eighth and sometimes I do one sixteenth. It all depends on how busy the instruments are in it. So if I find it hard to hit a metronome because of the drum, I might make it faster so I have a guide. And all the metronome is is just speed limit. It's just letting you hear where you're supposed to be once you got your natural timing down, once you get your natural timing down, Pat. All right? So, sample school discussion, volume three slash tutorial recap for beginners. Hopefully, this helps you out. Hopefully, you'll get you know, into it and start making dope-ass beats. And um, you can let me hear some of what y'all are doing out there. And hopefully, this is helping a bunch of y'all. Thanks for the support. I truly appreciate it. Anybody else you know getting to beats, share the video with them. You know, have them subscribe to the channel so they can be on point, so they can get all the latest stuff that I'm doing. Thanks again. I truly appreciate it. Peace.